The drama began when a man threatened to kill relatives of his ex-girlfriend in Nailsey. Police later spotted his car on the outskirts of the town. They gave chase and near Raxall, two policemen were hurt when the man drove at them and crashed into a police van. The pursuit finally ended in the centre of the village where the gunman held the police at bay. All roads to Raxall were sealed off after the man drove at two policemen on the main Phelan's road. One constable fired a shot at the windscreen to stop the man mowing him down. After five hours of intense negotiations, the man surrendered and was taken away by police. The siege ended in the centre of Raxall after a high-speed chase. The man, described as violent and dangerous, claimed he had explosives and his car was booby-trapped. The man was armed with a sawn-off shotgun and he threatened to kill himself on numerous occasions. He spent most of the night inside the car and sometimes with the muzzle of the gun inside his mouth. There were 30 armed policemen here while three negotiators from only 30 yards away talked to him. The car with its shattered windscreen had a false number plate. Throughout the tense siege, the man threw cartridges out of the car. After he gave himself up, army bomb experts sent in a robot to search for explosives and the boot was blown apart. Residents close by stayed indoors and listened anxiously for the outcome. We heard every word right the way through. What were they saying? Well, what is all through his life, what he'd been doing through his life, what, uh, what led him to do things like this. We were awoken about one o'clock with the noise of shouting and a bit of Anglo-Saxon coming over, which is very bad for the vicar. Uh, and then we heard the dialogue, the um, chap and the negotiator talking down the chap in the car. But we really saw very little because the police yelled out, get inside out of your gardens and keep clear. Were you frightened? Well, the vicar mustn't say yes, but I think the answer is yes. The pit of my stomach was a bit tight. The negotiators adopted a softly, softly approach with the man. The assistant chief constable who masterminded the operation said he was very dangerous. We had our, our prisoner uh, in a very emotional, uh, difficult state to control. Uh, the negotiators negotiating behind, from behind the vehicles and the scene generally contained by armed police officers. Do you think the constable who fired a shot at the man's car did the right thing? Yes, I do. I think there was a clear, a clear-cut situation where, had he not have carried out that action, uh, he would have been very seriously injured and possibly killed. The police are still questioning the man at Western Supermare Police Station, and charges are expected to be made later tonight. In a shotgun siege at Raxall near Bristol, was today jailed for six years. Bristol Crown Court heard that Anthony Jones threatened a brother of his former girlfriend with a shotgun. Later, he was involved in a high-speed chase which ended with the armed siege. He was arrested when a police officer persuaded him to give himself up. The judge, Sir Ian Lewis, said he accepted that the only person that Jones had wanted to hurt had been himself and that he had genuinely wanted to commit suicide. He said Jones had been distressed at the breakup of the relationship. The judge then went on to praise the efforts of Avon and Somerset police who were involved in the Raxall siege. Anthony Jones embarked on a 12-hour drive of terror after his girlfriend broke off their romance. He threatened to blow up her house in Southfield Road, Nailsey. Armed with a sawn-off double-barrel shotgun, he drove round the estate ringing up to say he had enough explosives to wipe Southfield Road off the face of the earth. Armed police toured the estate looking for his car. He drove at two police officers. One managed to fire a shot at the car, shattering the windscreen. A six-mile chase followed in which he drove at a police car. One officer suffered a broken leg, another a broken ankle. The chase ended in the centre of Raxall when Jones's car went out of control. A police negotiating team was called in. Jones claimed his car was wired up with plastic explosives. He threatened to kill himself. Six hours later, Jones was persuaded to give himself up after unloading the shotgun and throwing it down. It was Detective Chief Inspector Bearden's calm negotiating that persuaded him. How did he manage to talk the man out of killing himself or killing anyone else for that matter? 
Well, it's through patience and tact and discretion over that period which uh, made this uh, dangerous young man change his mind. This incident happened only five months after Jones had been released from Swansea prison for setting fire to the home of another girlfriend. 14 months later, Jones is back behind bars, starting a six-year sentence. The man held police at bay for eight hours last October in his car at Raxall near Bristol. Carol Payton reports. The court heard that Anthony Jones, armed with a sawn-off shotgun, held off police who surrounded his car at Raxall after a high-speed chase. The drama had started earlier in the day when Jones tried to see his former girlfriend, Anne Hutchins, at her nailsy home. The prosecution said Jones became angry when Anne's father said she wasn't there. During a heated argument, he threatened her brother with a gun before driving away at high speed. Police were alerted and he was spotted in the early hours of the morning in a lay-by in Raxall by a patrolman who alerted reinforcements. As two armed officers approached the car, it drove towards them at speed. One of the officers fired at the car as it drove past, shattering the windscreen. But the car drove on and police gave chase. Jones was eventually stopped after a six-mile chase back at Raxall shortly after he crashed through a roadblock, hitting two officers, one of whom had a leg broken, the other an ankle. Jones claimed the car was wired with explosive and threatened to shoot himself. A police negotiating team was called in, and eventually at eight in the morning, Jones gave himself up after unloading the shotgun cartridges and throwing down the gun. In court today, he pleaded guilty to theft, deception, illegally possessing a firearm, shortening the barrel of a shotgun, and using it with intent to resist arrest. But he denied endangering life and making threats to kill.